Capitola and urged the citizens of the city of Capitola to reach out and support its humanitarian mission. Um, so um, there's the proclamation. Um, Michelle and Dane, would you, you would you like to um, um, say a few words? Absolutely. Thank you, Mayor Story. We really appreciate um, your acknowledgement and city council members, thank you as well. Um, as Mayor Story said, I am Michelle Averill. I am the CEO of the Central Coast Chapter of the American Red Cross. And joining me tonight is our wonderful board chair, Dane Lobb. And it's a great honor to accept this um, special proclamation declaring March as Red Cross Month. We couldn't do the work that we do without our community heroes who are our volunteers. And the Red Cross is run 90% by volunteers. And it's important that we receive those financial donations as well as um, blood donations in order to support our community in um, those times of need. Um, I'm incredibly proud to share a few of the highlights of what we've accomplished together over the past year. Um, as you may remember, we had the worst fire disaster our area has ever experienced. This was all in the middle of a pandemic. So our volunteers were responding. We were setting up shelters and um, supporting our community um, in ways that we've never experienced. And I was so proud of the work that was done and how everybody pivoted and made sure that we were um, supporting our community um, at their greatest need. Um, we've been experiencing a historic um, blood shortage and we are now looking at how we can address climate change effects because they have been having um, a great impact on disasters as we have seen. So um, one thing that I wanted to mention, which might be at the top of our minds right now, is the crisis in Ukraine. So I'd like to just briefly um, share what the Red Cross is doing um, in order to support um, the Ukraine um, community. International Red Cross teams are on the ground in Ukraine delivering urgent assistance. Uh, for the past eight years, international Red Cross teams um, have been providing food, um, fuel for heating, medical supplies, and support um, for housing to those living close to or on the line of contact at the eastern border of Ukraine with Russia. Um, as the conflict has been spreading, um, Red Cross teams have been increasing their support across the country and providing first aid and medical supplies to those in the region. For our part, the American Red Cross is deploying staff to Romania, Moldova, Poland, and other European countries to support the humanitarian effort um, for Ukrainians. These highly trained crisis responders are supporting on the ground relief efforts alongside local teams, including the Polish Red Cross and Moldovan Red Cross. And when help can't wait during emergencies, American Red Cross volunteers and blood donors step up to ensure people in need receive relief and care. Now I'll turn it over to Dane. He can um, give an update on um, disaster um, close to home. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah, thank you, Michelle. Thank you. Thanks, Michelle. And thank you, Mayor Story, for the great job on our proclamation. We're extremely grateful. And thank you, City Council, for inviting us to your meeting. I want to echo what Michelle said about uh, the great work that the Red Cross is doing in assisting those in the Ukrainian crisis. I can't overemphasize that everyone in the Red Cross and these physicians are volunteers. And many of us are often asking, what can we do to help those people who are in need? And the Red Cross is that opportunity. So if you're looking for a way to make a difference locally, and you want to think about something down the road, participating in maybe deploying out to uh, countries in need like Poland or Romania to help out with those refugee crises that are happening in those countries because of the displacement war. Please consider volunteering for the Red Cross. I want to also mention that every eight minutes, there's a disaster somewhere in this country. And whether that's a hurricane or a flood, or just recently, we experienced a tsunami right here in the Central Coast. Red Cross volunteers stepped up and helped those who were in need with making sure that they had shelter, food, and psychological uh, protection. Uh, we've also, I, I think we can all remember just back to the CTU fire. It seems like just yesterday uh, that we saw the sky light up with the lightning, and then we noticed the smoke and the fires that devastated our community. What was the right person, the volunteers who responded out to help those uh, in need? 
and we uh, offered $2.5 million in grant support for those victims and organizations to help with the recovery and efforts to uh, help those displaced victims. You know, locally with fires, we've supported 17 cases of 55 people in Monterey, 244 in, uh, cases in 591 people here in Santa Cruz County. I'm gonna ask each of you to talk to your friends, talk to your neighbors, talk to those who you care about. If they're looking for a way to support and bring back in Clara Barton's uh, spirit, the opportunity to serve and to help our fellow citizens. The Red Cross is that way. Let me turn it back over to Michelle for some additional comments. I'll just, I'll wrap it up here, but I wanted to mention um, one of our community members in Capitola, um, business owner Sherry Robidoux, who's one of our board members, has been um, organizing blood drives um, right at the Senior Center on Bay Avenue. She's been doing these um, every other month, and each drive has been collecting about 35 units. So if you guys know Sherry, if you bump into her, please thank her. Um, she's so proud of this work, and it has been just instrumental in us um, recovering um, that blood um, that we were needing to build up in our bank. We were down to less than the day of blood supply, which was a critical um, shortage for us. So um, I just wanted to mention just the great work that Sherry's been doing in that. Um, one other thing I wanted to mention is, is our Santa Cruz office. We were chatting about it earlier. Um, we just recently became a certified as a green business. We are the first Red Cross um, chapter office in California to be recognized as a green business. So we are really proud of the work and looking forward to continuing um, just being mindful of climate change and how the Red Cross can have an impact, whether it's, you know, ordering things or, you know, how we are um, just buying, you know, supplies and things like that. So um, if anybody's interested in volunteering with the Red Cross, we're always looking for additional team members, and we'd love to have you. Um, please visit redcross.org and um, forward slash volunteer today, or you're always welcome to reach out to me. Um, I'm more than happy to help you um, become a Red Crosser. So thank you so much. I appreciate the proclamation, and I really appreciate your partnership. So thank you. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you. Uh, um, before you go, uh, Dane and Michelle, I just, did uh, council members have any questions for our presenters? Um, seeing none, um, I, I did have a question. If um, people would like to donate to the um, uh, human, humanitarian crisis in your frame and through the Red Cross, mm -hmm. how should they do that? Is, um, do you have a website that uh, they can go and, and designate it for that purpose? Um, so on redcross.org, there isn't a designation for Ukraine relief, but if you send in a check and put in the memo for Ukraine relief, it will be designated for um, Ukraine relief. Okay. Great. Yeah. great. I appreciate the question. Uh -huh. um, well, great. Thank you uh, so much um, and um, for your work, Michelle. Uh, and Dane, uh, particularly for your volunteer effort um, as the board chair, um, it is it's certainly vital work that you do uh, to help people who are recovering from disasters. Uh, and congratulations on being red and green uh, <laughs> at this time. So, uh, so thanks for being here, um, and um, keep up the good work. Thank you so much. All right. Bye bye. Bye-bye. Um, with that, that will bring us to um, the item 3B, which is a um, proclamation uh, designated March 15th, 2022 uh, as Equal Pay Day. Um, and do we have um, someone from, um, there we go. Um, Ms. Heen, is, did I Hi. say that? Hi. 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 Uh, well, welcome. Um, I thought what I would do was uh, read the proclamation, um, or I was going to paraphrase it, or um, okay, and, and then uh, and then and give you uh, a few minutes to uh, present, if that's okay. Um, so this is a proclamation for Equal Pay Day, um, and um, whereas 59 years ago um, there was um, 
passed the Equal Pay Act, uh, where uh, women, uh, especially minority women, uh, were continuing to suffer the consequences of unequal pay. Um, and according to the U.S. Census Bureau, um, working women full-time year-round in 2022 in the United States typically earn 83% of what men earned, um, indicating insufficient progress and in pay equity. Um, and, and according to a graduating to a pay gap, uh, a research report by the American Association of University Women, the gender pay gap is evident one year after college uh, graduation, even after controlling for factors such as um, affecting earnings um, and occupations, hours work, and college major. Um, and whereas nearly four in 10 mothers are primary breadwinners in their household, and nearly two thirds are primary or significant earners, making pay equity critical to families' economic security. Um, a lifetime of lower pay also means that women have less income to save for retirement and less income counting uh, for Social Security and other pension benefit formula. And whereas in 2009, the Little Bed Better Fair Act was signed into law, which gives back to employees their day in court to challenge a pay gap. Um, although the Paycheck Fairness Act, which would have amended the Equal Pay Act, closing loopholes and improving the law's effectiveness, continues to languish in Congress. Uh, fair pay strengthens the security of families today and eases future retirement costs while enhancing the American economy. And whereas Tuesday, March 15th, symbolizes the time in 2022 when the wages paid to American women catch up to the wages paid to men from the previous year. Therefore, I, Sam Story, Mayor of the City of Capitola, do hereby proclaim Tuesday, March 15, 2022, to be Equal Pay Day in the City of Capitola and urge the citizens of the City of Capitola to recognize the full values of women's skills and significant contribution to the labor force and further encourage businesses to conduct internal pay evaluations to ensure women are paid fairly. So uh, congratulations, um, Ms. Hine. And if you would like to say a few words at this time. Thank you, Mayor Story, uh, and council members for issuing this proclamation. Um, I will apologize. I'm probably going to be reading most of what I'm saying because it's been a very, very long time as a retired school librarian. It's been a long time since I've spoken in front of a city council or a school board or um, any other type organization. My name is Kit Hine, and I'm a member of the Santa Cruz County uh, branch of the American Association of University Women. AAUW is a national organization that has advocated for educational and ec economic equity for women and girls for over 140 years. The Santa Cruz County branch was started in 2014 with the merging of the Santa Cruz and the Watsonville branches, each of whom were active for over 70 years. Our branch currently has 87 members. I've been a member of the Santa Cruz County branch for only seven years. Um, I'm a recent um, resident of Capitola, um, although I've been a member of AAUW for 45 years. AAUW recognizes Equal Pay Day every year in an attempt to publicize the gap between men and women's pay. This year, March 15th, symbolizes all, equal, all women's Equal Pay Day, and we are going, we're improving. Last year, it was March 24th. Um, but Equal Pay Day for Black women and Native American women and Latina women won't increase in occur until late summer or mid fall. AAUW looks forward to a time when there is no gender pay gap and therefore no need for an equal pay day calculation. So we want to thank you, Mayor Story, for reading our proclamation and the rest of the council. Obviously with the heavy women's support here on this council, um, 
I'm very pleased to be a member, a resident of this city. Well, so thank you, Ms. Hines, and uh, it's very true. You have a lot of support on the Capitola City Council, um, both from the uh, the women and the men. So, um, you know, uh, thank you for your efforts to equalize the pay uh, disparity between men and women, um, and hope to hear from you maybe next year, a year from now, and that we close that gap um, um, completely. Uh, maybe I March 1st. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, and so with that, thank you. Do um, council members have any questions for this time? I'd like, your, I, I'd like your idea that uh, the day would be sooner. So. Yes, yes. We, keep, we keep hoping. Yes, <laughs> keep positive. Yeah. So, um, I do have a question. So um, what are some of the major factors that are contributing to that date moving forward? closer to January 1st. What are some of the things that you feel that you could identify that people should know about? I think, I think that um, in, my, in my experience, I'll tell you my, my whole take on the thing. Like I said, I'm a, I'm a retired school librarian. I went into public education thinking that your degree and your experience and whatever uh, was how your pay was determined until I heard a woman from um, the Valley, Medes no, Bakersfield, um, talk at one of our conventions. And she had gone into um, public education with the same idea, had been hired at the same time as a man who um, had fewer qualifications than she did and for some reason or other ended up finding out that he was in fact making more money. And it turned out that in the interview process, he presented himself as having other qualifications or they accepted other qualifications. I'm not really sure, it, it was a long time ago. Um, and they weren't getting the same salary. The same thing that we see happen in um, uh, private industry a lot. Um, women come out of college with the same degree as men and yet in the interview process or in the hiring process somehow one of the things that we have fought for was um, the idea that you shouldn't have to disclose your salary at your previous job. Um, if a woman made less in a previous job, then chances are they're not going to offer her as much um, in as she seeks a new job. So those are those are the kinds of things I, I think I'd like to believe that a lot of the original prejudice, the idea that women belong in the home, that that um, they shouldn't be out working in the in the workplace anyway, that kind of stuff I think is primarily over. But um, a large percentage of, of uh, the private industry just it yeah it, it works against them. Well, thank thank you for that um, um, explanation, Ms. Hine, and thank you for your work. Um, well, thank you. Ever and um, and we'll um, hope to see you here next year. So, okay. Thank right. you. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Um. That will bring us to uh, item four, which is uh, additional materials. Um, do we have any additional materials for this evening? No, Mayor Story, none were received. Okay. Um, which brings us to oral communication. This is the uh, time when members of the public may address the council on items that are either on the consent agenda or not on the agenda this evening. Um, if you would like to speak, um, you can raise your hand in uh, the Zoom application, or you can dial star nine on your phone, and the moderator will um, uh, give you the opportunity to speak for up to three minutes. Uh, you can also send an email um, at to public comment at ci.capitola.ca.us, um, and there is a 
timer on your screen for those of you that have have that. Um, but uh, Larry, do we see anyone wishing to make a address uh, to council and public comment? Mayor Story, I do not see any attendees with their hands raised on this item. And I'm sorry, I just checked my email. Um, and I do not see any, any emails on this item. Okay, well, thank you. Um, with that, we'll go on to item six, which are staff and city council comments. We'll start with staff uh, comments. I don't think staff has any comments for, for us this evening. And how about council members? Anybody have their hands up? I see. Uh, council member Bertrand? Yeah, um, today walking around the city like I normally do and talking to residents is I happened to find myself doing, everyone was commenting about how the wind was great. They liked the blustery wind and they were just sort of enjoying, you know, everything off the sea. I guess that's where the wind came from. So it's, it's interesting that so many people just enjoyed the wind today. And I have to admit, I did as well. So welcome to Capitol, Windy City, I guess. Thank you. Uh, any other council member have comments? Um, uh, seeing none, um, I just wanted to share, um, last Saturday, I, I went down to the uh, Capitola Historical Museum because they had just opened up their new exhibit, Perspective um, in the Eye of the Beholder. Um, and um, if um, any council members, if you haven't seen it yet, um, I would encourage you to go by and check it out. They're open on um, Saturday and Sunday afternoon from 12 to 4. Um, and, um, and, and any resident who may um, um, be hearing uh, this broadcast, uh, I would encourage you to maybe go by and uh, check it out. Um, and uh, it's a fascinating look uh, at the history of Capitola, um, and it gives you a lot of insights onto um, you know, the, the, the reasons why things are as they are. Um, there's also going to be a reception on April the 2nd, I believe, um, where they're going to officially um, open the exhibit um, as well unveil a new um, artist painting um, that they have of, of, of depicting indigenous um, tribes that lived in the area. So I just wanted to share that with everyone. Um, and with that, um, let's move on to item seven, which is uh, the consent agenda. Um, these are items we'll be taking with a single motion unless um, the council member wishes to um, uh, remove an item for um, greater discussion. Is there uh, any council member that would like to re uh, remove an item to our general government? Yes, Council Member Bertrand. Uh, yeah, thanks very much, Mayor. So one of the items deals with uh, how we conduct our meetings during the COVID times. And um, I think it was mentioned at one of the prior meetings that a couple of people, uh, Pam Greninger, your neighbor, asked me actually, um, when are we going to switch to um, just normal meetings? And is, is that going to be considered on an agenda item or going to be decided by the city manager. Maybe Jamie could talk about that. I just don't know how we're going to do that. So that's my question. Yeah. Um, so Jamie, did you want to address uh, that question? Yes. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, we do plan to bring an item to the city council meeting next meeting coming up in two weeks where we can go over some different options for the council to consider about how and when to transition back in-person meeting. So two weeks, we will have a discussion in front of the council to get feedback on that topic. Council member Peterson. I just have some follow up on that question. I think right now the, um, the bill that allows us to meet remotely is set to sunset on the 31st. And so if we have a meeting on the 24th and at that point we think that there's no other option but to come back to in person, and then in the following week, we find out that one of the bills that's being floated about continuing uh, the virtual option does move forward as kind of an urgency bill. 
will will we hold a special meeting will we come back in person and then potentially decide that we might want to remain virtual i'm just trying to determine if we're going to be having this discussion on the 24th which is a week before um the virtual option actually expires what might happen what might be our options um should the opportunity to remain virtual be extended Debbie, did you want to address that or? I'm happy to take a stab at it. I was under the uh, I'm wondering if maybe the city attorney wants to, because I was under the impression that we could continue to meet virtual beyond this month, but I may be corrected. No, that's my understanding as well. Um, perhaps Council Member Peterson is thinking of the resolution that the city has adopted um, which is part of, which is required by the state legislation. So um, the city resolution, I don't know, I don't know if we have it, we usually put it on every consent calendar. Yes, it's on the consent calendar here, so that would cover it. Even if it didn't, the state legislation includes a 30-day look back, so we would be fine. Oh, interesting. Okay, maybe I'm thinking of something different. I was under the impression that the legislation that allowed for uh, virtual meetings was only uh, in place until March 31st, and that after that time there would be an expectation that we return, but perhaps I'm thinking of, of the wrong legislation. Okay, thank you. I, I think it's in place until, I might be getting the date wrong, but I think it's in place until 2024, unless um, it's altered, but I think, it's, I think we're good for a while. All right, thank you. Thank you. Any other council members um, have questions on the consent agenda or seeing none, is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? I move the consent agenda. Is there a second? I can second that. Okay, there's a motion by council member Petran seconded by Councilman of Vice Mayor Isaac uh, to approve the consent item. Well, we can have a roll call vote, please. Council Member Bertrand. I approve. Council Member Brooks. Aye. Council Member Peterson. Aye. Vice Mayor Kaiser. Aye. Mayor Story. Aye. And that motion passes unanimously, um, which Mayor, sorry, you, you muted yourself. Sorry. Um, so I'll back up a little bit. Um, I, I was saying that this brings us to item um, eight, which is general government public hearing. First item eight A is to appoint a representative to the Commission on the Environment uh, to fill a midterm vacancy. And the recommended action is to appoint the representative. Can we uh, start with the staff report? Thank you, Mayor Story and Council. Can everyone hear me? Yes. Okay. I just have, a, I'll just kind of talk you through it. Um, you, you really said it all already, so thank you, Mayor. Um, there is a vacancy on the Commission on the Environment. Uh, there is someone that um, resigned at the end of the year, and she previously served as Councilmember Peterson's appointee. We did open up recruitment. We received one application. The application was included in your packet. And so if it is, you know, to Council Member Peterson's liking and in Council is in agreement, you're free to make that appointment for the applicant to serve through the rest of this term. And then if he wants to continue, he can reapply for a full term, which would begin, I believe I said, um, it would, that would begin January, 2023. So. Thank you, Chloe. Thank you. Are, are there any, any questions for Chloe on the item? Seeing none, I'm, I'm going to um, see if any member of the public would like to address the council uh, on this item. Um, if you would, please raise your hand in Zoom, or you can dial star nine 
um, and you'll be given up to three minutes to speak. You can also write an email uh, to public comments at ci.capitola.ca.us. Um, Larry, do we, um, you know to anyone wishing to speak on this item? Mayor Story, I do not see any attendees with their hands raised, and we do not have any emails on this. Okay, I'll bring it back. Is there um, uh, a motion uh, by the council to approve the appointment? Uh, yeah, I'd like to motion, uh, make a motion to approve the appointment. Is there a second? I shall second that. And we have a motion by um, Councilmember Peterson and a second by uh, Vice uh, Mayor Kaiser to approve the application of Jason uh, Shepherdson uh, to the um, uh, Commission on the Environment. Uh, with that, Chloe, can we have a roll call vote, please? Councilmember Bertrand. I approve. Councilmember Brooks. Did we lose Chloe? Well, yeah, Chloe, I think oh, we lost your odd audio. Councilmember Brooks, can you hear me? Yeah. I can now. Sorry. Yeah. Hi. Thank you. I'm. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Councilmember Peterson. Aye. Thank you. Vice Mayor Kaiser. Aye. Mayor Story. Aye. The motion passes unanimously. Thank you, Chloe. Um, the next item, which was 8B, has been uh, continued uh, to our next meeting on March the 24th. So we'll proceed to item 8C, which is to receive a work plan for a review of parking meter and permit parking program rates. Um, the recommended action is to receive a report regarding a work plan for the review and analysis of the parking meter rates and permit parking fees in the village and surrounding neighborhoods and establish composition of an ad hoc committee. Um, so. Steve, looks like you're going to lead us in uh, this item. I am. Good evening, uh, Council. Let me share my screen. Larry, does that look all right? Looks great. Thanks. So the item before you is uh, kind of the kickoff of a review of the parking meter rates and permit parking program uh, rates and and we may look at the rules and that too. Um, before I, I start, I want to just mention that historically we, we last did this kind of review in 2008 and 2009. I've included a, a lot of the historic documents from that, all the, the resolutions and ordinances that were adopted then in a report by the advisory committee at that time. I'm not going to go into details on that. We're not here tonight really to discuss the pros and cons of what the rate should be. Um, it's more just to go through the work plan and help uh, give us feedback on an advisory committee makeup. There we go. So like I said, the council identified as part of their goals to review the parking meter rates and village permit parking programs following establishment of the outdoor dining program. That outdoor dining program was approved by the city council and is tentatively scheduled to go to the Coastal Commission in April. So it seems like an appropriate time to start this project. The work plan is similar to the one we prepared for the outdoor dining pro, um, program project. Staff drafted and um, we will be reviewing both the meter rates and the rates and rules for the parking permit parking programs. Um, the work plan identifies the goals, stakeholders, city staff assignments, data collection, proposed timeline, and development of an ad hoc advisory committee. The ad hoc advisory committee is really what we're here for tonight. Um, we'd love your comments on the work plan, but this uh, ad hoc committee is they were recommending be established. It's similar to the one that was established back in 2008 when we went, went through the review. Um, our proposed makeup is one to two council members, three city residents, three business representatives, and one person uh, recommended by the finance advisory committee. Um, this is 
your discretion how you want to make up this committee. I think we're anticipating that um, we would do a, a recruitment once we know the uh, residents and business representative numbers. We would Chloe would go through a standard uh, recruitment for those positions, and once we get enough uh, applicants, we would return to the council to make appointments. Regarding the council member appointment, you do not need to do that tonight. Uh, that can be part of the uh, process when we come back with the other, uh, the applicants. You certainly welcome to do it tonight, or you don't even have to pick one or two members tonight. We would like to lock in a finance advisory committee member if you're so willing, so that they can make a recommendation at their next uh, next meeting, so we don't get delayed on that. So with that, pretty simple re the recommendations tonight is to receive the report regarding the work plan, a uh, copy of the work plan is included, and regarding parking meter rates and permit parking programs, and establish the ad hoc committee composition. So with that, I would be I'll go back to this page, I hope that's what we're going to talk about, and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Yeah, thank you, Steve. Um, are there questions from council members? Yes, oh, Council Member Peterson. Thank you. I just wanted to clarify when it says three village business representatives, um, that's the BIA specifically, correct? Um, I didn't get that specific. You could make that clarification. Um, I think all the businesses in the village are BIA members. Um, well, that's yeah, I guess that's, that's part of my concern. I just want to ensure that whoever is, is on this committee are dues paying BIA businesses that are they're paying the, the BIA tax as required. You can certainly make that requirement. Okay. Um, Council Member Bertrand. You're on mute, Council Member Bertrand. Again, uh, three city residents. Um, so the concern I have is that um, we have a balance between city residents that live in the village and that live in other parts of the city. I, I, I don't want us to have um, three village residents. I, I think that might stack it unfairly. Or maybe we could, you know, have the you know city council decide what would be the best distribution. But that's a concern I have. Steve, did you want to address that? I need to respond to that. I, I mean, certainly yeah, okay. make up the makeup and the make up the committee any way you fit. Um, if we want to identify village residents versus city outside the village residents, that would be fine. So, so one other detail to remember is, is once you form the committee, the next step will be for staff to advertise the availability of the positions. Then we'll return to the city council for you to make the appointment. So just at this point saying it's three city residents, you will, you'll be able to look at the applicants and then ultimately make a decision about how best to represent the various interests, various neighborhoods around the community. You also could, as, as Director Jesper just said, you could limit it to composition um, at this time, but you do have another, you will be actually seeing the applications and making the direct appointments down the road if we form this committee. Thank you, Jamie. Um, Vice Mayor Kaiser. Thank you. I think I was just going to clarify with um, Councilmember Bertrand. I think the city, three city residents would be anybody not within the village, but then the business representatives would be within the village, not that it would just be village residents. So I don't know. I, I think that makes sense to me. But is that where you were talking about? Or you don't want three um, business representatives from the village? If I could respond, I understood it. Go ahead, Council Member Bertrand. Go ahead. You're... Yeah, um, I, I just, um, uh, thank you, uh, Vice Mayor. So I just want to balance on the, um, so I sat on the blue ribbon. Um, it's not listed that I was a member, but I went to all the meetings consider myself a member and I, I just didn't want to have it overbalanced 
in terms of um, village concerns, because um, there are other representatives in, um, excuse me, <laughs> there's the rest of the city, that kind of thing. So that's, you know, I was just putting that to the city council. Um, as um, Jamie mentioned, uh, when we get applicants, uh, we can decide at that point, you know, how to balance out the committee. And so I don't mind waiting till then. Um, I would like to have at least, you know, one outside of this, the, the, the village for sure. And the same for the village businesses, you know, one outside the, well, they're all, well, there's other members that, you know, no, they're all village residents. <laughs> they're all village businesses. So I guess they all have to be businesses. But anyway, I, I just like to see a balance. That's all. Got it. Thank okay. Any other questions from council members? Um, seeing none, um, Steve, I had a question about the goals in the work plan. Um, it kind of simply stated as reviewing our rates and, um, and um, meter rates and permanent rates um, without expressing a particular objective or um, end result uh, from doing that. Um, and my thinking was that this was all possible because of the, um, um, you know, the parklets the, and the permanent parklets losing 25 spaces potentially in the village um and um and i to me there were um kind of greater goals of one trying to mitigate for the village uh, employees and the village residents the loss of those spaces um and to encourage greater use of the beach and village parking lot um, and to also protect the neighborhoods from spillover of, uh, of uh, from you know tourist parking, um, and I just want at, at what time should we maybe the council maybe try to weigh in on what these overarching goals may be, you know, for the purposes of reviewing these rates and permits. Well, I certainly made notes right now on that regard. Um, maybe when we come back with making appointments, we can um, specify an item to, to establish what the, the goals, what the goals of the committee are and what the council is looking for. That right. would be my recommendation as we include it there. Cause I, I don't think we're prepared to have that discussion tonight. Well, the, yeah, that was the sense that I got, but I just, I, I think I, um, and also wanted to give the other council you know, maybe time to think about, um, you know, what what are we ultimately trying to achieve by um, adjusting, you know, our meter rates, adjusting our permit rates, and so. Um, but um, yeah, maybe that would be the time when we are actually making the appointment. Um, council Member Bertrand, you had your hand up. Yeah. Um... I was willing to wait, but um, just to let you know, since my involvement in the Blue Ribbon Committee and other efforts since then, I've been very concerned about um, equity in terms of um, the different rates for some of the businesses and, and how that influences the availability of parking uh, in the village in general. And um, so I'll talk about that issue. So I've held this issue for before I was on the city council and um you know i definitely am going to be pushing for an equity issue so that uh, uh rates don't unfairly influence the availability of parking thank you thank you um seeing no other questions on the staff report um i'm going to um I'll go after the public see if there's any members of the public that would like to address the council uh, on this matter. Uh, if you do, please raise your hand um, on the Zoom application. Uh, if you're on the phone, you can dial star nine and um, uh, you'll be given three minutes to speak. You can also send us an email at public comments at ci.capitola.ca.us. Um, and yeah, Larry, it looks like we have one uh, hand up. Yes, Mayor Story, we have Karen Hanna. And um, 
Yeah, go go ahead, Karin. Can you hear me? Whoops. Oh, Larry, we seem to have lost her. Okay. Am I unmuted now? Oh, yes, we can hear you now. Okay. Oh, go ahead. I bet you're all surprised to hear from me on this issue. <laughs> Since, uh, well, at least Jacques knows and Steve knows, I've been on every um, Blue Ribbon Committee, every Parking Committee, every Village Parking Committee since the beginning of time. Um, so I really, uh, I'm really happy to hear what both Jacques and uh, Sam had to st say about um, identifying the purpose of the of this committee. And I think I, I think having a committee and talking about it is the absolute right approach, as long as it's not um, influenced as a as a preconceived notion that the rates are going to go up. Um, Mainly, I mean, you know, I mean, that's all I really have to say, that we really have to look at what our goals are. And if the commission is open to, um, you know, really exploring all the possibilities, whether the rates do or don't have to go up, or some do and some don't, then I, I think it's the right approach. Uh, there was something in the staff report about, you know, dealing with inflation. Well, isn't that why inflation gets worse? Because we say, ooh, inflation, that gives us an opportunity to raise our our rates on everything and raise our costs of, of I mean, our uh, like retail prices, et cetera, et cetera. And that just leads to more inflation problems. So, um, uh, you know, I, I support the idea of having a committee and uh, you better believe I'm going to put my name in. Thank you. Thank you, Karin. <laughs> and no, we weren't surprised that you would be here speaking on the matter. So. I definitely wasn't. <laughs> Um, is there any other members of the public that would like to address the council? Mayor Story, I, I do not see any other attendees with their hands raised and we do not have any emails on this item. Okay, well, I'll bring it back to the council for further deliberation um, and a possible motion. Um, is there a council member that would like to begin? I see... Uh, Council Member Bertrand. Yeah, Mayor, uh, thank you very much. Um, I just have a question of staff. Um, there's probably going to be a lot of education in this, and I know some of the records when, you know, I was trying to find out things, it's kind of hard to find out. And, you know, there's people in the police department that were the experts and no one else knew what was going on. Um, I think there's probably been a lot of work trying to uncover and explain uh, even to staff what's going on. Can you care to comment on that, Steve? The rates, the permits, and all that? I mean, or will that be? I'd be happy. I'll try. Okay, you, thank you. There is a, quite a bit of, of history, obviously, and uncovering the documents is, is never easy. I mean, I probably spent, uh, it was actually part when we were doing the Parklet program or the outdoor dining program, pulling up these the ordinances and resolutions that are in the packet, and, you know, that takes a while. So there's quite a bit. I think you're right. We need to have a night where we kind of go through the history of the rates, uh, the parking meter rates and the parking meter programs and what their goals are. And then we have a, we'll have one night or one, one meeting of this committee where we talk, we get the police or the, yeah, the police department to come in and talk, um, the parking permit programs and how they function and what their role is in that. So, I definitely see the beginning of this process as an educational effort and a history lesson. Any other? Um... Mr. Mayor, if I may. Yeah, I, I just want to bring that point up and I'm glad that Steve responded. Um, he's the best to do that. Um, and it's, this is not an easy problem. And, you know, I think it's beguiled many different people on the um, city council and city staff uh, for some time. So I appreciate that the city has put this forward as, as an issue that uh, we should uh, deal with and at least give a good review. And I think Karen, if she's still in the audience, would agree as well. 
And Council Member Peterson. Thank you. I understand that this is a, a really important issue, and I think to uh, Karin's point, it's, it's a good thing that we're creating a committee to consider these uh, these issues. Um, I do think that it's important for us to consider, um, as she mentioned, that this not just be a committee about raising the prices, particularly because I, I think we had previously discussed that the cost for an outdoor dining space was meant to cover the cost of the lost parking revenue. Uh, for those that use those spaces. So I think that's something this committee is going to need to take into consideration. Uh, that being said, I'd like to make a motion to form the proposed ad hoc committee uh, with the committee makeup as listed uh, in the staff report and here on the screen. And I'll second. Okay, so there's been a motion and a second. Um, I'll go now to uh, Vice Mayor Kaiser. Thank you. I was wondering if um, we should add in there that we, when making the ad hoc committee, um, actually put, come forth with the goals or if city council needs to give our own goals while the committee is being formed or whatnot. I don't know if that's the right direction or order of business, but I would like that to be in there as well. Just so again, like what um, Councilwoman Peterson is saying, like we don't want to lose um, scope of what we're working on and like if it's just to raise prices, vice versa, things like that, um, have the goals probably more um, centered in that choice as well. So that, that's a proposed uh, amendment to the motion, Vice Mayor Kaiser? Yes, I guess so. Thank you. <laughs> is, that, is that acceptable to the maker of the motion? I think so. Can you clarify, uh, Vice Mayor, are you, are you looking that we we create the goals first and then give them to the committee? Or are you asking that we just make sure the committee knows what the overall goals of the, can you clarify? <laughs> yeah, no, thanks. Um, I just want, um, I guess if we as a council need to come forward with our goals first, maybe that's the first step. Or if once the committee is formed, um, then we make up our goals or put our goals forth. Um, I just wanna make sure that, um, yeah, that all the different points aren't lost within just creating the committee. Did, did she answer your question, Councilmember Peterson? No, I think um, I think the uh, city manager Goldstein might have some some clarity. If I remember, maybe I'm misunderstanding. This is coming back to us before it goes to the committee. Well, so, or, or yeah, if I may, Jamie, but you know, for the uh, selection of the uh, makeup of the committee, that will be coming back to us in April. Um, and, I, and I believe what's being proposed is that maybe at that time, we also um, define what our overarching objectives are in this process um, and that we provide that to the committee. Um, so that, that, that would be my understanding, but go ahead, Jamie. That's pretty you said exactly what I was going to say. I was going to just provide a little bit more context and that the Finance Advisory Committee, I think the actual origin for this project came about for a number of reasons, one of which was the Finance Advisory Committee, I think, made some recommendations back before the pandemic to look into meter rates and other permit rates. Um, so that was something that I think carried over into uh, a goal setting session maybe in 2019 or 2020. It was decided we weren't going to do it that year, and then it got punched out a year, and so that's sort of where we are. But right now, I'm just going to repeat, I think, what Mayor Story just said, my apologies, is we will provide a little bit of that context of what the Finance Advisory Committee previously recommended and what the original goal language was, and then staff could outline some draft goals, and then when you're actually making the appointments, you, the council can adopt what the actual goals and mission would be for the committee. That sounds good to me. Does that sound about what you were asking for, Vice Mayor Kaiser? Sounds oh, great, thanks. Yeah, so it sounds like that uh, amendment is acceptable to the maker of the motion. Is it acceptable to the second uh, council member Brooks? It is, and I just, I don't know if we need to say it here, but that this particular ad hoc committee is subject to the Brown Act. Um, and I don't know if it's relevant in, in the motion as well. And when it comes back. Oh, I see Samantha, our city attorney. 
Thank you, Councilman Brooks. Yes, it is, but this committee would be subject to the Brown Act. Because it includes more than a less than a quorum of the council. It includes members other than the council members. So it will be subject to the Brown Act. My understanding is that staff took that it has already taken that into consideration and so is planning on that. Okay. Um, council Member Peterson, did you want to uh, follow up on that? Yeah, just with, with that in mind, and, and maybe this is something to consider, right? I, I think it's something I'd like to, to have considered tonight. Uh, in that case, I'd like to recommend that we have two council members on this and not just one so that this becomes a committee of nine. If this is a committee of eight, that means that the three village village business representatives that I've asked to be BIA members would not be able to discuss this in BIA meetings. And I think it's important that, that they be able to discuss this in BIA meetings with other BIA representatives. Um, but if this was a, um, a body of, oh no, I guess in eight, they could still speak with, the, with, this, with each other. Never mind. Not what bad math. So uh, yeah, okay. So either one or two council members is fine. Uh, I was under the impression that the three uh, village representatives would would cause a, a Brown Act violation, but it wouldn't. So scratch that comment. Thank you. But I, just to follow up on that, Council Member Peterson, um, you're right. If there's only one council member with the um, that would make a committee of eight, uh, which means that there may not be. Um, someone to break a tie um, on any vote. So sounds like it may be for that purpose, maybe appropriate to have two council members on the committee. See, I knew that was the first thing I thought. thought. Um, you knew um, that was why. You knew that was why you were proposing that. Yeah, that's that's yeah. where I was headed. Yeah. That's yeah. where I was headed. Yep, yep. Uh -huh. <laughs> you, you get me there. Sorry. You're trying right. to confuse right. us. <laughs> so, so uh, would I make an amendment to my own motion, or or would that can I just throw that in with what I've already said? Um, Council, Council Member Peterson, I have not seconded your amendment, so feel free to continue with your with your all the amendments you want. <laughs> I think, well, my original motion was to create the committee um, with the makeup as presented in the staff report and on the screen. Um, but it says one to two council members, so maybe I should just clarify that I'm, I'm making a motion to create the ad hoc committee with the makeup proposed by staff um, with there being two council members and not just one. Okay, I will second. <laughs> yeah, okay. Council member Brooks accepts the amendment from the maker. Um, and so, um, what we then have is uh, a motion to uh, create the ad hoc committee, um, and that committee will be made up of uh, two council members, making a total of nine um, uh, committee members, um, as well uh, at the um, meeting when it comes back, uh, we will also be considering um, kind of overarching objectives uh, to be a uh, for the you know for the purpose of uh, of the uh, committee uh, recommendation, does that restate the motion um, and the amendment um, accurately? Yes. With with that, um, I'll make a um, I'll ask for a roll call vote. Chloe. Councilmember Bertrand. I approve. Councilmember Brooks. Aye. Council Member Peterson. Aye. Vice Mayor Kaiser. Aye. Mayor Story. Aye. And that motion passes unanimously, uh, which will, thank you, Steve, um, which will bring us to um, item nine, which is adjournment. And, I have a statement. Um, um, well, um, what uh, on what matters, uh, Council Member um, I um, you know forgot to mention this when you asked for uh, staff and uh, board member comments. So I have um, something to uh, say, and uh, it's actually for a future agenda item. Okay, go ahead. Okay. I'll give you a minute. Thank you very much. 
So um, as everyone on the city council knows, uh, we've received letters about um, the upcoming uh, rent moratorium ceasing. And um, you know, I talked to Jamie about this and he talked to Sam about this and other communities, including uh, city, um, Santa Cruz City Council and other communities around here have been uh, dealing with this. And um, I feel it's our responsibility to the public who have come to us to ask for help in this regard that we respond. And so I'd like to get on the agenda uh, next time a presentation on the issue as we understand it at this point. And I'm not saying that we should take it up as an issue, but there is some uh, legal issues here that may uh, box us into uh, what we can do. And so I'd like that report to the public so that they can hear from us. Okay. And that's so what I'd like. All right, so there's a request that that matter be put on a future uh, agenda. Um, yeah, well, it sounds like it should be the next agenda. In order Correct. To do Thank you, Mayor. March the 24th. Um, so um, with that, um, I will now adjourn this meeting um, to our next regularly scheduled meeting on March the 24th, 2022, starting at 7 p.m. Um, thank you, everyone. Thank you, staff, for all your hard work um, in making this a great city to live in uh, and visit. Um, and to everyone, be kind to yourself and be kind to others. Good night, everyone. Bye. Right. Bye-bye. And walk your dogs. Goodbye. <laughs>